Hey y'all, I'm Black with Yaya. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. And back by popular demand, we are back with another story time. Thank you to Leroy from the Carolinas who openly shared his story about his journey on being a psychic tarot card reader to the final day. But of course, as I tell the story, I haven't done this in a few videos. I am making my crystal dry rub. Y'all look at these cute little bowls I got from Target. I thought it just fits the aesthetic so well. I am making my crystal dry rub, which is an all-in-one crystal cleanser that you can use to keep and charge your crystals this is all in one because you could use it for every single one of your crystals some crystals is not best to put them in liquids but this one you could sprinkle a bit on your crystals while you're not wearing them or while you're doing your rituals in the full moon your sunbathing whatever you may do sprinkle some dry rub up there and watch magic happen and you can get yours at blackwitchyaya.com let's get into this story y'all so you guys may or may not know when it comes to psychic tarot readers the reason i keep saying psychic because some people just read cards while others actually can tap into your energy and really see what's going on so when i'm talking about psychic tarot readers i'm talking about the real deal you are like how did you know that what is going on and the ones that just don't read cards they actually read you no shade. You guys may or may not know psychic tarot readers, most of them that are good, actually want to help out their clients and really want to provide guidance, communicate with their spirit, create a clearer picture. The good ones, they really want to help. But sometimes they be tired of y'all. Like there are some, I have heard plenty of stories of some clients who want to call all the time, who always feel like they need a reading for every decision they about to make in life, who actually get a good reading and spirit could be like, hey, you need to do A, B, and C. And they go do X, Y, and Z. Then be like, oh my God, what happened? Spirit told you to do A, B, and C and you ain't do it. That's what happened. Let me scoot this mic back because I feel like I'm yelling. And so this is the situation where Leroy, he has been reading ever since he could talk. He was always that kid that had an old soul where they'd be like, that baby been here before. He was always that kid that always just knew a little bit too much. And then of course, with him growing up with the spiritual family, they were like, okay, that boy got to give a scene. And they knew that he was going to be a psychic. So y'all, he would be like eight years old. So, you know, sometimes when you're younger, your family comes over, everyone's sitting in the living room, they gossip and talk about stuff. And then an adult will realize that there's children in the room. They're like, y'all going somewhere, stay out of grown folks' business, go stay in the child's place. With Leroy, they were literally let him sit in the room because they knew that, they say that boy knew. So they were literally let him sit in the room because they were like, well, maybe Leroy will see something and he'll give me some advice on what's going on. So they kind of always let him sit around because he had the gift of seeing. So he would literally be giving adults advice. So he's been doing it for a very long time. His family owned a spiritual shop. So as soon as he turned 16 and he was able to legally work for some time, they put him to work. His uncle was a psychic tarot reader as well. So to train him up on how to operate and how to work with clients, he will have them sit. He will ask the client like, hey, do you mind if I have my nephew in here? He's a psychic reader as well. I just want to train him up on how to handle consultations and readings and all that stuff. And they, if they didn't mind, Libra would have his little deck off to the side, pulling cards and make sure that they're getting the same messages sometimes Leroy will see things that he maybe didn't know how to communicate it because he's so young so he may just be like hey unk i'm seeing i'm seeing a little girl in the, in the bed of roses who's this little girl then maybe the client had a daughter who name was wrote like he will see stuff like that and they were able to tag team and they did that up until the point where he was a teenager and they trusted him enough to have his own clientele so it would literally be people like uh, -uh i don't want him i want Leroy. and Leroy is like 17 18 years old up here actually being booked out after school so as Leroy continued to understand his gift he realized not everybody listened there will be different clients some maybe who are actually kind of scared of getting a tarot reader so if they get a message that they didn't really want to hear they'll just ignore it then come back later confused as to why their life got even more messed up and Leroy will be like well in your reading I believe that I told you to do this this and that like he could barely remember it but he would be like I know I seen something with you you didn't do what we told you to do and they'll be like nope and then they'll be confused as to why stuff didn't work out. So this always baffled Leroy. He was like, you guys have a cheat sheet to life and you're still just doing the opposite of what you want to do when spirit literally clearly gave you a message on what to do. And that frustrated him. But of course, his uncle was telling him, listen, you ain't seen the half of it yet because some clients, they want a reading and some clients want to hear what they want to hear. So he constantly had to remind him not everyone is going to listen to you. That's not them disrespecting your gift. You can't 
can't really care too much because people still have free will. So Leroy will kind of feel sad sometimes. Like, did I do something wrong? Did I not portray the message clearly? Did, should I have wrote it down for them? And his uncle told him, no, some people just don't want to listen. Like, you just got to get used to that. Some people will get a reading and be like, okay, I understand and go do the complete opposite and just disregard the entire reading. So Leroy had to learn how to detach from the clients instead of being like, oh my gosh, why didn't you listen? Why did you do this and that? Okay, so now let's help you some more because that will constantly have him overexerting himself and burning him out. And in this email, he said that it took him years to realize that some people see and hear what they want to see. And when they don't obey, it's because they shift their reality to what feels comfortable to them. And I could honestly understand how it can be frustrating because it's like a lot of people wish they had messages that were clear. I know sometimes when I'm looking for guidance, I'm like, Spirit, don't be coming up in here speaking symbolisms and signs. Just let me know clearly in this dream what's going on. And when you're able to tap into your spirit, guys, and they're able to create a clear message you really want to take advantage of that because I think about the people who may not get clear messages like that who are in dire need of them so if you want to have guidance take advantage of those clear messages thank your spirits because one day they're gonna be like child you ain't gonna listen I ain't finna show you nothing so make sure you appreciate it while you have the the access to tap into that energy where this via your dreams your own messages are receiving readings from others and throughout this story I feel like we need to name the uncle he didn't say his name but we're gonna call him I'm gonna call him Uncle Fox just because he's like the word to the wise and throughout this entire story so his uncle Uncle Fox Leroy is Uncle Fox's nephew there we go so Uncle Fox had to tell Leroy like listen you can't get too attached to these clients and what they're going to do because you'll be the person that's trying to carry them throughout their entire life when you have to give the message clean your hands with them and move on and let them make the decision to exercise their free will so that was a very hard lesson for Leroy to learn because he knew since he was little he's seen how many people that he actually helped with his gift to the point where every person he gave a reader to he wanted to help them make sure that Jesus they just live their best life when a lot of people had to work on stuff personally and internally to actually execute whatever needed to be done in the reading for them to actually live more elevated and excel but Libra wanted to do the work for them so he had to learn how to take a couple steps back another lesson that uncle fox told leroy is that you must always pay spirit while leroy was still young he's in school so sometimes he would try to give advice to his friends and then his friends would go home and be like yo my friend leroy said that you need to do this this and that and the parents would be like how in the hell your little friend leroy know all this going on because as they're talking it's almost like it was hard for him to have regular conversation because he had this gift he didn't know how to control it he just didn't know you can't walk up to people and read them you actually have to have permission to read their energy and not everyone wants to hear advice but over time he was able to control his gift and he says it was hard for him he said he got a loud spirit guy and it's sometimes it's hard to be like hey be quiet we just having a regular conversation don't want to hear advice from the spirit world right now so he had to learn how to be like okay they didn't ask for that but when they do ask he dives right in and gives the clearest messages in my head i'm like dang i wish he wasn't retired because i would love to have a reading but leroy continued to read as he got older and he kind of became the main person in his family shops that gave out readings because everyone just wanted this young perspective some people just wanted the experience of getting a reading from someone who was so young and so knowledgeable so he built up a lot of clientele and he started making his own little money right and that brings me back to what i was saying before another lesson that uncle fox told him was that you must pay spirit like i said he was just giving out advice giving out gifts and his uncle always told him it must be something in return you may have some clients who can't afford it monetarily but they're like hey i can't pay you but i heard your car clucking out there when you pulled up i could fix your whatever will make a car clock or your brakes or something they will do some type of exchange and his uncle always told him don't let people play in your face basically and just try to take advantage of your gift because they have to pay you and they have to pay your spirit your spirit needs to be thanked for the work that they're doing as well it's like a team effort so speaking of paying spirit one client that Leroy had who checks always cleared who was a faithful client we'll call her faith because she was a faithful client was faith she was a very well-to-do woman who had a very successful business successful husband checks always clear anytime that she needed some spiritual advice she was willing to pay extra she took care of Leroy she used her resources just because Leroy actually helped her to get to that successful point she always made sure that he was good she was the person like hey if you need something just let me know hey you need your shop repainted don't worry I got it she was always very helpful because the place that 
that she was in initially when she came to Leroy is drastically different from where she is now. So she always gives thanks to him. Sometimes she'll just stop by, drop food off at the altar in the shop. Like she just wanted to make sure that he was all well taken care of because she was so appreciative of what he did. So I mentioned Faith just because I wanted to show an example of one of the healthy clients that Leroy had because we're about to be introduced to another character by the name of Amelia. He wanted me to call her because she asked a million questions. So we're going to call her Amelia. So Amelia was actually well to do as well. We should call her Amelia again because she had millions and millions of dollars. So she was very well to do as well. So sometimes you may be thinking like, okay, if she has all this good stuff going on in her life, she had an amazing family, she had beautiful children, husband had a successful career, she has successful businesses. It's like, what's going wrong in your life? What are you asking for? Because with many spiritualists, if you ask them, their main clients are asking for how can I make money? How can I find a spouse? Those are the top two things, money and a spouse that people usually ask for. And she has both very well. Husband's nice, kids are nice. So you may be thinking like, okay, so what's going wrong in your life? You have the money, you have the nice house, you have the nice cars, you have the loving husband, you have the loving children who are a very, very smart, random fact kids real smart so you will be thinking like okay so what's like what is it amelia did not fit in and we're gonna dive a little bit into her life growing up from what leroy has shared about her she never really fit in she was always overly nice overly bubbly but a lot of people didn't think that they would get along with her because she was a little rich girl like this girl been, she was born into it and then she grew up and doubled it give it to somebody else and double it like she always was well to do well richy rich rich of course with her being rich she went to school with other rich children celebrity children but she was always the richest like everyone knew her family so they're like okay we're rich as well but you rich rich so you may be like just a lot of people thought that they wouldn't be able to get along with her like she's gonna think we're poor she's gonna think we're this and that like so they naturally thought oh she must be stuck up because how successful her family is but that wasn't the case. She actually wanted friends. She wanted to fit in. And with her lifestyle or her family being so successful, sometimes she felt like she didn't have a social life because they were always going to events and banquets and having a smile on stage with her dad. So she didn't really get to be a kid. So that grew up into adulthood with her marrying her successful husband, always having to go to events and banquets and smile on stage with her husband now. So she felt like her life was recycling itself again when she was like, I literally just want a friend I could sit on the couch with a drink wine and watch Lifetime movies. That's what she genuinely wanted, but she felt that she couldn't make that connection because she felt like, okay, when you're younger, this is where you learn how to make friends and play on the playground and learn how to have relationships with people and build bonds. But she never got that. So she felt that when she got older, she was handicapped. Like, how do you make friends? So she always just felt like an outcast, even in her neighborhood. Her and her husband had the biggest house. So everyone's kind of like, oh, that's where so-and-so lives. That's where Amelia lives. So, you know, don't go by there. They're like, everyone thought like okay don't bother them like they're rich and well to do like don't bother them leave them alone or she felt that sometimes when people wanted to be her friend they just wanted it for the notoriety like oh i'm friends with amelia me and amelia hang out so she just never felt like she could have a genuine friend when she tried some again some people wanted the notoriety some people just was trying to get her for money they'll start off being real real good friends and all of a sudden it's like girl so you know i got fired from a job child you know I don't know what me and the kids gonna do and of course she would help but she's like I just want a friend I can laugh with I just want someone who we could sit down have good conversation grow together just understand each other she just really wanted to talk and I'm like girl I feel your pain because I ain't got no friends either I know what it's like to be like dang I just want to pack orders and be on the phone with somebody I get it so she was desperate for this feeling of just wanting some girlfriends okay just some people she could book a trip with and just have a good time with so she was searching and searching for the answers she was looking online how to make friends how to build friendship until she ran upon these websites that talked about compatibility with people like what's zodiac signs make the best friends what zodiac signs had the most good times together so she dived into that she started learning about zodiacs like okay i'm a pisces so they said it to be friends with like a sagittarius okay so scorpio they need to be friends with this, this and that so she was learning about i don't know her zodiac sign so i'm just guessing but she was really trying to learn what signs are more compatible with hers and then she started diving into spirituality how to bring in friends how to manifest so she was diving into the spiritual world 
all just trying to figure out how to make friends. She did meditation for her self work. Like maybe if I get rid of my anxiety, I'll be able to approach people better. Maybe if I do this spiritual bath, I'll draw in people and people will be more attracted to me. So she's learning about all this stuff. And this all led her to Leroy's website a psychic reader and so she was reading all the reviews for him and she's like okay let me just go to him and figure out like hey what do i need to do make a friend where do i need to go like she's new to it so she's thinking like point me in that direction i'll be at target at two on a sunday boom she goes into the shop she is absolutely amazing this is where the amelia come from with the amelia questions what's this statue what's this crystal what's that smoke what's that i smell is that peppermint oh you have herbs in here oh you don't use them for cooking oh what's this what's that she was naturally intrigued with the world of spiritual because all the websites that she's been on and all the reading she's been doing she's actually seen it in person so she's like wow this stuff is real like this is a whole this is like a walmart for witches like she's like really into it so she goes in for her reading Leroy gives her a reading and Leroy even says himself this was one of the best readings that he has ever gave and he's just kind of like all right so did you just need a reading as a reminder that your life is going good like what's going on and so he's giving the reading giving the reading and then when he got to the 12th house with friends and enemies, he drew a blank card. None of the cards in his deck are blank. He looked at the card. He's thinking, is this the card that comes with the set? Did I open up a new card? This is just the example one. Why did I draw a blank card? He pulled another card. The card said loneliness. And that's when he figured out this person is lonely. You have a husband you can talk to. You have kids who adore you. But at the end of the day, when your husband's at work, when your kids are at school, you feel lonely. You just want someone like he just he felt bad because literally he felt that all she wanted was someone she could just go get some coffee with. She wasn't looking for this dynamic friendship where they'll just be a power friends and just she literally wanted friends like she even admitted she would watch Real Housewives and be like, I need to join a reality show so I can have an excuse to hang out with people. Like, that's how lonely she was. Oh, not going to lie, y'all. I'm literally getting teary-eyed just thinking about it because I know that feeling of, oh, girl, dramatic. Don't do that. Ooh. Reading the email, it is a very touching story because I feel for Amelia just because I know what it's like to feel lonely. Not putting y'all in my business, but I guess just reading the email, I could relate to Amelia because I know that yearning for a friendship, you feel like everything else in your life going good. But after an episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, I would like to call somebody and be like, girl, did you see what Martell did? Why is he on the show? I would like to have that with a friend. So I know it's like not to have friends, even if you just don't want the whole, even if it's just simply someone you could call, laugh with, hang up, not speak to for a week or two. But I know what that's like. So I think that's why I got emotional. Because I'm like, oh, girl, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, girl, I'm about to go to Target. You want to go? Like, just something like that can mean so much. So if you have friends, make sure you appreciate them because it's hard out here, okay? Okay, where was I in the story? Okay, so yeah, so she decided to get a reading with Leroy. He realized, like, okay, so all this girl want is a friend. While he was doing his reading, he realized that something as simple as making a friend for her life and her situation, he just kept getting the word strategy. Like she would have to strategize it just because she is so well to do and have everything that she had to be careful of being too open to the point where she would attract vultures. That's the word he used. Like people that just wanted to be around her, pictured with her, have access to her money because she wanted friends so bad to the point where it could turn out that someone would use her. Then that would be her first experience with a real friend is someone that uses her Then she'll go in isolation and just become angry with the world. He saw that happening if she wasn't careful with how she made friends so first he was saying you need to work on your social skills work on your dynamics see how other people interact so he guided her and said hey put yourself out there it seems like simple advice but he was coming from a spiritual place just to do to how careful she had to be so he was like in your neighborhood you're going to see a group of women walking join them for that walk that's all he said and she's like what women walk around my neighborhood like what are we talking about so a few weeks later she was sitting by her window one day she consistently looked for these women to be walking and in my head i'm like i'm sure he meant get out your house and go look but she sat by her window because she was so used to being like alone and she just waited for these women to walk by then all of a sudden she just saw these group of moms doing their power walk you know how they be walking like they're not running they're not walking but it's like that power 
walk with the shoulders. So she was like, oh my gosh, these are the women that are walking. Let me join them. So she ran upstairs, put on her workout clothes, and she just ran to catch up with them. And so she was like, hi, I'm Amelia. I just want to join you for the walk. So they were kind of like, Amelia wants to walk with us? Like she doesn't have a personal trainer that works out for her that she can hire and just do cooking for her? Like that's how people thought of her. Just because from their perspective, they're like, oh my gosh, she's stuck up. She doesn't interact with us. She just stays in the house all day. But from Amelia's perspective, she's like, I want to talk to you, but I don't want to be the weird little clingy person trying to hang out with y'all. So let me just stay to myself. So just two different perspectives that they had of each other, right? So the overall goal for Amelia to join these women on the walks was not to be their friend. He made sure he instructed her these women are not your friends i just want you to see how this dynamic can be you need to show the good and the bad of friendships you're thinking you're just going to have someone you could laugh on the phone with but it's good to understand the bad that could come with it as well to prepare you for when you do finally get that group of people that can be your tribe so while she's on these walks with these women she's seeing like okay so when this person goes home to get some water they talk about her everyone doesn't move until this person comes back so she must be the leader this person is kind of quiet in the corner so she must just be the follower this person is kind of stressed out all the time so she must really not like them so she was able to kind of see first view how friendships work so she was constantly walking with them keeping her distance one thing about her she was very obedient and realizing like okay these women are not my friends i'm just here to watch here to watch so Leroy was happy that actually she was following the advice and setting her boundaries and not being too overly zell to make friends so we'll leave amelia over there doing her nice little power walks with the women let's get back to leroy's life so let's rewind a little bit with leroy so he is married he has kids and he noticed that with one of his kids had the same gift of psychic readings so just how he was trained with his uncle fox he brought his son into the shop as well to start doing readings and over the years just like leroy he was able to start doing his own separate readings as well and he was also gifted with the gift of crafting so if they needed spell work done he was also able to do the spell work as well so leroy was training him up and once once he realized he was getting to the point to do it by himself, Leroy realized like, all right, I'm getting older. These readings starting to exhaust me. He will literally have to schedule out his appointments after one reading. He would have to schedule a nap in between each one because he was getting to the age where after tapping to their energy, communicating with their spirit, it drained him before he could do readings, 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 back to back to back to back. But he noticed that he was getting exhausted more after reading. So instead of over exhausting himself and his gift, he said, you know what? I need to start planning my retirement. My son is good. Hopefully he could continuously pass the gift down, pass the gift down. But I'm going to do like my Uncle Fox did and I'm going to start planning my retirement. I'll still own the shop, but I'm going to put it in the hands of my children. So he decided on my 67th birthday, I'm going to retire. I'm going to lay back, enjoy this money I done made, enjoy my peace. I may even move down the floor like all the old folks do. I just want to slow down. He felt like he was always on the go, on the go since he was a little kid. He wanted to get his childhood back. He wanted to see what it's like just to sit down, have a conversation with someone and not be expected to give advice. So he said on my 67th birthday, I'm going to retire. So the next day after he confirmed it with his spirit, he went to his office, sat down at his computer and sent out this email. Hello, all my vibrant clients. I want to thank you all for years and years of laughter, visits and peace. You all are the best clients anyone could ever ask for, even you stubborn ones. I would like to thank you all for getting me to this point. I want you all to know that you have helped me in my journey as well, and I hope I have helped you. I hope I have helped you so much that you're able to take all the messages that Spirit has provided you and carry it on throughout your life. January 9th will be my last day at the shop. I'm retiring, everyone. How exciting is that? I'm so happy to be able to get to this point and I can't wait to lay on the beaches of Florida and stick my toes in the sand. My son will be able to assist you with any further needs. I would say I'm just a phone call away, but honestly, I won't be. I have completed this mission and there's nothing else for me to do. Be free and be at peace. So Amelia has done her assignment and she made her way back to the shop to book another reading with Leroy. She wanted to tell him like, hey, I did what you told me to do. I sat back, I watched those women. Sometimes friendships could look, get a little crazy, but I still think I want a friend. And like I told you guys, sometimes Leroy gets clients that are very hard headed. So he was pleased that she actually followed the assignments. So he's like, hey, listen, join my email group. You will see the days I'm available for the month. Just book a reading and we can go from there. 
So she signed up for the email campaign. She booked her readings and then they started having readings almost every single week. Anytime he released his availability for the month, she booked one each and every week. Just because at first she wanted friends, but for Amelia, these readings were her only time she really ever got to talk to someone else outside of her family. So sometimes she didn't even need anything. Sometimes Leroy didn't even need to pull cards just because she wanted to sit down and talk and have someone who listened. In this case, if she had to pay someone to listen, she was willing to do it. She would go in thinking she needed a reading that she's talking about how one of her sons had won their soccer game. She's talking about, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about adding highlights in my hair. Oh, I'm thinking about doing this and that. And Leroy eventually got to the point of like, okay, so you just want someone to talk to. If you don't need help, I don't want to consistently have to take your money. But she's like, no, you're helping me. I promise you, you're helping me. Like you're giving me advice. You're listening. Like this is helping me. Basically fast forwarding a little bit. She got to the point where she was using Leroy as her friend. She thought like, oh my gosh, I go get this reading from this man. And he listens to me. He gives me advice. We laugh, we talk. But to Leroy, it's just a reading. We're just booking. I'm giving you advice. You don't really have too much going on besides this friend stuff. So we're just sitting around talking about how you want friends all the time. He'll tell her like, hey, it's not the time yet for you to make a friend because something's going to happen where you're in a different situation in life. She basically was going to move in that neighborhood. She was going to be able to make friends, but she wasn't at that point yet. So she was thinking, well, in the meantime, whenever we decide that we're going to move because it wasn't on their forecast to move anytime soon she was using Leroy as her friend and Leroy he was taught like hey don't let these clients use and abuse you but he was like well my uncle told me you almost always pay spirit and Amelia made sure she paid very well sometimes she paid three times the price as like a tip so she was like really exerting and showing her appreciation similar to Faith but like I said Faith had a healthy relationship with the reader where she was helping out when needed giving when she felt the need to give where Amelia was turning this situation into, you're my friend. I was led by spirit to come to you because it's meant for you to be my friend. This is what I was looking for. After I get all these readings, I feel so fulfilled. You're my friend. Leroy knew that Amelia was gaining this unhealthy obsession with him, not in like a sexual manner, but just genuinely like, I just need someone to talk to. So Leroy was like, if this is my gift of serving and helping people, and this is the help that she needs, Anytime he's seen her on the schedule, he's like, listen, I'm about to retire anyway. I'll just sit up here and listen to what she needs to say. I'll give advice when needed. If I'm pulled to pull cars, I'll do so. But I'll just sit up here and listen. She's going to move soon. I'm retiring soon. So we'll just do this for now. So it was weeks and weeks, months and months and months of her just booking a reading and just simply wanting to talk. So Amelia genuinely felt a connection with Leroy. She felt that this was what she was always asking for, just simply someone to talk to. Like I said before, she wasn't looking for this dynamic friendship with all these elements and layers. She just simply wanted to talk to someone about the simple things in life and for that person to care. And she felt that Leroy actually did care, even though to him he was doing a job, but he knew like, my job is to help and this is helping her so let's just do it so as many sessions progressed it was one session in particular that drove Amelia to tears so Amelia kept having amazing sessions with Leroy she just was getting a lot of information out sometimes Leroy did have to pull a couple cards to help her with her simple troubles in life but it was one session that Amelia did not know would be her last so in this session Amelia phone ringed she answered the phone. It was her housekeeper who accidentally locked herself out the house. Amelia answered, hello. The housekeeper's like, hey, Amelia, I'm sorry. I accidentally locked myself out the house. Are you nearby to open up the door? And Amelia said, oh, no, I'm with my friend right now. But if you go to the back patio underneath the rocking chair, there's a gold key hanging that'll get you in through the back. Um, the housekeeper said, oh, thank you so much. I'll see you later. She hung up the phone and Amelia continued talking. And Leroy was sitting there with a shocked and confused look on his face. And Leroy asked her, oh, are you hiding the fact that you're getting readings from other people? And Amelia says, no, why? And Leroy said, you, you said that you were with your friend. And Amelia said, yeah. Leroy leaned back, took a deep breath. Leroy heard his Uncle Fox voice in his head about drawing boundaries with the clients. And he told her, Amelia, I'm not your friend. I appreciate your service of always wanting to come to see me, but you are my client. We're not friends. 
And Leroy honestly felt bad about it, but he just knew it in the position he was in. He was like, I can't lie to her. I can't create this false fairy tale in her head. I'm trying to give this clear, precise advice and guidance, and I have to draw the boundary that I'm not your friend. I don't want you to think I'm your friend because that's where this unhealthy relationship comes in. I am married. I can't sit up here and have my wife thinking I'm up here kikiing with you for fun and not actually providing a service. So he knew he had to make that statement and draw that clear line. To him, he was like, well, maybe she just had a slip of the tongue. She didn't really mean friend. But he said the look on her face, she genuinely felt that they were like besties because they were talking every week. Remember, I said she just wants someone she could talk once a week with. She scheduled out her readings once a week. So without even completing the session, ooh, without even completing the session, Amelia stormed out. She went to her car. She cried. She cried. She called her husband. Or her husband was kind of like, you thought this man was your friend the whole time? Like, everybody knew that this was just like, did, did he? you're going to him for a service. That's like thinking your doctor is your friend. But to her, she was like, no, but I tell him everything and he doesn't tell anybody. He keeps it between us. He respects our friendship. And the husband was like, he understood where she was coming from just because the need of friends that she wanted so bad. But he had to be real with her too. He was like, you signed a contract where he's not supposed to tell anybody. It's confidential. This is a working relationship. So then after those couple weeks passed, her husband came home and announced, listen, I got a promotion at the job. They want me to open up another office. We got to move. And then Amelia immediately thought, this is where I start to make my friends. Leroy said that it'll eventually come to a point where we're going to move. When we move, I'm going to have some neighborhood friends. I'm going to have, I, I get to plan events. I get to have parties. I get to have people over. When the kids are at school, we get to hang out. So she's super excited. She's like, oh my gosh, everything is coming full circle. I want to go tell Leroy. Like maybe this won't bother him just because I'm moving. So he won't have to worry about me anymore. But I just want to let him know that he was right. She goes to the shop and she sees an unfamiliar face. Leroy's son she's like hey um where's Leroy I just wanted to not bother him but just have a quick message for him I just want to tell him I got some confirmation on something really quick and the son says oh Leroy's my dad he's retired and Amelia's like oh no I just had a reading with him a couple Thursdays ago it was January 8th I believe and then the son says yes um he retired on January 9th the son is saying it as if he already knew because it's like you're on the email campaign. So you must have known that he was going to retire on January 9th. From Leroy's perspective, he was like, I retire tomorrow. And me saying that I'm not your friend should it be a big deal. And that's why he thought that she was sharing so much in that session because, oh, she knows it's my last day reading. But if we rewind just a little bit. She didn't join the email campaigns. When I say email campaigns, basically like the emailing list, she didn't join it until the day after he sent the email saying that he was going to retire. So she didn't know. But in her head, in that moment, thinking about how Leroy said, hey, I'm not your friend. You're just my client. And she's thinking that she's been annoying the whole time that he really didn't want to read her. Like she just went down this. I guess it was probably her anxiety that probably, you know how sometimes when people have anxiety, they think nobody likes them. Me. And so she just went down this rabbit hole like, oh, my gosh, he said I'm not his friend. That was our last session. I made him retire. I drove him crazy. I remember him telling me about how sometimes he'll have clients that are annoying. So that's why he was so happy that I was following instructions. I was the last annoying client that drove him to retire. So Y'all, that moment went on where Amelia thought that she was the annoying little piece of crud that made Leroy retire. So she was like, okay, let me back off. Let me just calm down. We're about to move. I'm just going to let that friend come to me. I'm going to stop with this obsessive stuff. But she genuinely felt like, damn, I'm back to being in school now where no one wanted to hang out with me. I was the outcast. I was annoying. No one thought I was cool enough. So she kind of started to revert back to those old feelings she had. She still wanted friends, but she said, let me just take a more natural approach i'll just let them come to me we're about to move so it's about to happen anyway also if you want a little mini call journey you can get yours from blackwitchyaya.com you can have this sitting next to your candles while you have your herbs and your petition written down and rolled up in here sitting next to your candles i know i got this big boy right here but if you want a little mini one i have these on blackwitchyaya.com i think these are just so cute i always have one sitting next to my candle i put my little petitions in here my crystals in here so it could just like a little vault to hold everything but yeah so back to the story leroy didn't waste any time he moved to florida living his best little retired life they moved to a beautiful neighborhood and they were just living their life they saved up enough money where none of them had to ever work again 
and that was it he was retired at peace and the same for Amelia they ended up moving and then she was like okay this is my moment I'm gonna meet a friend I'm gonna have a calm approach I'm not gonna be annoying I'm gonna let her come up to me and we're just gonna do the things of the things so they moved to a very nice neighborhood as well had a tennis court Everything was nice. So while Amelia was on the tennis court one day, it's this young lady that walks up to her. So immediately now, mind you, Amelia is waiting for the friend to come to her. So in this moment, she was like, oh my God, dude, this is the friend. This is the friend. This is this is my homegirl. Like we're about to be besties. And so the woman walks up to her. She was like, hey, did you just move in? And she's like, yeah. And the young lady's like, oh my gosh, so have we? Like we just moved in as well. So they're talking, they're being newbies. So she's thinking like, oh my gosh, we're both outcasts. Like she don't even have her friend group yet. We're gonna be friends. So they could continued building this friendship they met each other on the tennis court to play against each other and then one day the young lady invited Amelia over for dinner I finished my dry rub before I finished the story so we could just clean up while I wrap up the story so Amelia got invited over to the young lady's house for dinner so she walks in it's a beautiful home so the young lady calls her husband downstairs so she could introduce him to Amelia's husband and she turns and says I want to introduce you to my husband Leroy they ended up moving oh, they ended up moving to the same state same city same neighborhood and this entire time Leroy's wife was the woman that was meant to be Amelia's friend so immediately when Amelia sees him and when the husband hears the name he's like didn't you have a tarot reader named Leroy so Amelia immediately gets to apologizing she's like oh my gosh I'm Amelia I was the client that you had that made you retire I'm so sorry I just wanted a friend really really bad but you were right that I will move to the neighborhood and this one will be my friend and she's my friend but it was your wife the whole time I'm so sorry I feel so embarrassed I didn't mean to do that so she's apologizing like basically I'm sorry for being annoying i didn't know i would be the final straw that made you decide to retire and they're looking like girl what are you talking about and leroy explains i announced that i was going to retire on january 9th months before you didn't get the email and she's like no i didn't get any email she's going back through all her old me she was like no the first email i got from you was this this and that i never got an email so he was like no i already i thought you knew i thought that's why you booked your reading on a Thursday instead of a Monday like you usually do because you were trying to get me right before I retired like I I, th I thought you knew this so basically they go through the whole hassle of trying to figure out like girl I've been announced my retirement it wasn't your fault and then after Leroy thought about it he felt that she had that connection to him of always wanting to talk and felt that he was her friend because she sensed the energy of friendship because her friend was meant to be his wife the entire time so she just felt that energy thinking it was him but it was actually his wife so the wife found it extremely funny she was like I would hear about you sometimes always having a book of reading at a certain time on a certain day I didn't know it was you so they found it funny but I'm about to cry because to me that's just such a beautiful and co like when does stuff like that happen thank you so much Leroy Amelia the wife the husband the children thank you so much for being able to share your story so with this being a beautiful story I feel like there are some lessons from it as well first things first make sure you have a healthy relationship with the person you get your spiritual services from whether it's tarot card readings the person that make your teas the person that cleans your house whatever make sure you keep a healthy relationship with them because with spirituality I know you can get such strong connections with people who understand you and know the help that you need where you think like oh my gosh you need to be besties but that would be an unbalanced relationship that would be you just wanting to be their friend because they provide a service to you so make sure you just keep it in a professional business type relationship I know it's hard saying that with spirituality but they're running a business at the end of the day so if you're not going to obsess over the lady that checked you out at Walmart you can't obsess over the person that's going to be giving you your readings I know you're going to feel a connection you're going to feel relieved they're going to make you feel so much better but you have to keep that healthy relationship in order to make sure that you're getting your services and your messages clearly and nothing is blurred that goes to all types of relationships, okay? Just as Uncle Fox said, for those of you guys who provide a spiritual service, do not obsess over, I say obsess, but don't get so involved with your clients where you feel that what they do is a reflection of you. If you know you did your part, you provided the service, it's up to them to abide by whatever guise that you gave and it's up to them to make the choice. If they decide to do something completely opposite and they got a clear message of what could happen, that's them. You did your part, you did your due diligence, you have to let 
let it go, cleanse your hands with it. You can't walk them through their entire life because as your clientele build, you're going to be walking hundreds and hundreds of people. Then you ain't going to be able to get messages for yourself because you're always concerned about what your clients are doing. I will also say be patient as well when you get your messages. Know that the messages that are presented, if you're getting from a true reader, things are going to come to pass. Things are going to get better. Don't try to rush the process because you never know what will lead to that moment of you getting what you want, getting that healing. Just how what if Amelia decided, you know what, bump that. I ain't finna wait till we move. I'm gonna go find me a friend real quick. And that friend used her up and made her shut, like it shut herself off from everybody else that she would have never found Leroy's wife who ended up being her very, very good, good friend. But thank you guys so much for tuning into this very long story. I thought that this was just such a unique story and I'm happy to share it with you guys down below. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. How do you feel about Amelia? Do you understand where she was coming from? If you are a spiritual service provider, Provided, do you understand the line and the boundaries that Leroy had to draw? Are you in the middle with me where you just feel so happy for everybody that they're just one big happy family now? Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. And like I always say, as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe of the soul. Until next time, you guys, I'll say